Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a good day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name's Taylor. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. And on this YouTube channel, I generally feature content that's focused on knitting or spinning. And in this episode of what I call the Thread to Mend podcast series, I share with you the things that I'm making in real time. I have two projects that I'm currently working on. One of them is the cover pattern to Gudrun Johnson's uh, the Shetland Trader, book three, Heritage. Did I say Johnston? I meant Gudrun Johnston, sorry. Um, but this is the Vair pullover that's spelled V-A-I-R if you wanna look it up on Ravelry. And I am, as you can see, about here, which is an incredible amount of progress given the fact that I really haven't spent as much time knitting as I typically do. Work has gotten crazy with the holiday. There's a lot of online purchases on our website. Someone asked in my Mask Me Anything Vlogmas video um, what, I, what my day job is. And currently my day job is an admin, basically, customer service specialist. Um, I work for a company that distributes products that are manufactured in our factory overseas, and then they're shipped to the warehouse where I put orders in through QuickBooks and create shipping labels and invoice them and communicate with customers, wholesale and retail. And um, I enjoy it. I enjoy mostly my schedule, which is right now nine to five, which at 36 years old is the first time in my life I've ever had a schedule that is Monday through Friday, generally nine to five that's what I do. <laughs> um, but I do have a full-time job and this is what I do for fun. So I love to create garments. You know how they say devil's, devil's hands. Idle hands are the devil's playground. I like to keep myself busy as, you know, one does. But I personally enjoy knitting garments because I feel like fast fashion is something I tend to avoid. I rarely purchase things new any longer. In fact, when I do purchase new clothing, it's usually because I've been corrupted. I am an avid thrift store shopper. And one way that I have a more like high key wardrobe is by hand making the things that I wear, such as the garment I'm wearing right now, which is um, a design by Kate Davies called Ducat. I modified it slightly. I have lots of videos on it if you wanna check those out. I've been listening to myself talk a lot with all my Vlogmas videos coming out through December. And one thing I've noticed is that I am dyslexic as I cannot speak with a certain cadence that it seems like everyone else can. I just spew words three at a time and it's such a struggle to get words out of my mouth. So if you enjoy my content, thank you so much. You really do mean a lot to me here. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. But I am working on the Vare pullover. And this is, as I mentioned, a design by Gudrun Johnson. This is the side seam where you can see there is waist shaping here. And I'm knitting this with Jamison and Smith's Shetland two ply yarn. I am carrying, let's see if I can just prop this on my shoulders here. I'm carrying this yarn. Actually, I'm not carrying this anywhere because I've been knitting it in bed every night. This project hasn't even left the house, but now that I'm this far into it, I know that lace pattern pretty well. I'm not at all intimidated by it. Whereas when I first cast it on, I was afraid of dropping stitches. I was afraid I would forget what the pattern was and be overwhelmed if I was trying to do two things at once, like watching the road and knitting. I have a lot of car anxiety now that I didn't have before, and I'm afraid to like not watch the road, even when I'm just the passenger. Well, of course I don't knit and drive. Um, but I, uh, I'm now rather comfortable working this project and I'm carrying it in this adorable bag that somewhat matches. This is a bag by Knitting Nelly. I purchased this on an Etsy shop called Little Lion Heads Wool or Yarn. I'm not sure. Little Lion Heads is the shopkeeper and she makes um, little skein sets and she sells superwash kind of sock yarn type of stuff. I bought a little mini skein set with this and it's storing all my little skeins of Jameson and Smith to ply Shetland. I have an extra color in my bag that I intend to incorporate into the color work portion because I do feel like it lends itself well to this palette and I really don't know if I love this kind of cool toned mauve color in this project. I feel like 
it's the color that kind of stands out. Also the cream really stands out, but I like the high contrast of the cream and the, the, the brown. I was gonna say gray. Um, but the brown is, is this gorgeous heathered blend of gold and red. So I feel like the orange is such a perfect match. And if you haven't seen my previous video where I swatched for this, I have the worst swatch for this project. I, please don't judge me. I don't ever make them four inches. I never really measure more than a single inch of row gauge. And that has gotten me in trouble before. Don't follow my lead on that advice at all. But this is what happened. And um, I didn't even allow myself to knit, I think, more than a single row of the... Let me hold up the skeins for you. I thought this would be a really nice gradient to the main color I have here in a cone. So originally I was gonna do one of the motifs. You can see there's this like flower pattern right here, right there. I'm not trying to flick you off, but you can see that. But it's not a high enough contrast. They're just too similar. And so I kind of abandoned my idea of the color work, color choices. But what I do intend to do, and I'm gonna hold up my project because I have all the colors represented with the exception of this one. And oh, let's see if I get this step closer. So I'm going to do this white thing here, here, and here with this color because it's very similar. With the flower, I think I'm going to do, hmm, I think I'm going to do the orange with either this light color so that they're, it's like a fade. But you can see that it's like blue and yellow, so I might do the orange and the mauve. I really am not 100% yet. The, I think that the yellow kind of color and the red might be good for the checkered pattern. But it might be strange if this color is not already represented in the project. I wonder what your thoughts are. Um, I have no clue. So that is the progress on the there pullover. It has quite a bit of orange. Of course, there's just one more row. And I think once I get to the main color and have the sleeves to balance that out, as you can see, she does on this variation, the lightest color here. And when you kind of pull back and look at the full design, it doesn't feel like the main color as it does right now. So I feel like it's going to get toned down. It's very orange right now, but it will get toned down soon. And I'm not going to say orange is my favorite color, but I do love orange. I collect orange chairs. I don't know if you've noticed that or seen enough of my home yet to know how many orange chairs I have. This is orange and... I have pinks in this needle point I made, but you know, it's all about the, the yellow and the orange and the gold for me. Um, I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm celebrating for the holiday. I'm not celebrating. I'm decorating my home for the first time ever for the holiday. And my color scheme is like bronze, maybe copper one day. I'm going to incorporate more and more things each year as I find them. I try to shop at the thrift store. I found this huge box of glass bulbs. I've only broken one, <laughs> which still breaks my heart a little bit because now it won't be perfectly filled when I put them all back. But um, I digress. I just love warm, coppery golds and yellows. Um, my late grandmother, who we affectionately called Guma growing up, she always had gold, like everything, big gold, um, rings and gold. I don't know. So it's something I embrace. I have gold glasses because gold. So I wish I had this still on a larger needle for you. I'm mid row right now. I wonder if I could knit my way to the end of this round and show you my progress on this project. As you might be able to tell or if you've seen previous episodes you might already know that I'm knitting Stephen West's Slip Stravaganza shawl and if you weren't already aware I am using my own hand spun yarn to work this project. I don't consider myself a shawl knitter because I don't knit very many of them. I've been knitting for several years. I, I want to say almost seven years now and I've knit maybe four shawls but this is the Slip Stravaganza in its fullness. 
Of course, I haven't steam blocked it for you because I'm literally knitting it on the video, but I did steam block it just the other day. So we can give you a very close picture. You can see I have this on like a 60 or 64 inch cable plus my 32 inch cable. So, uh, oh, this will probably hang better. The cable never really helps it hang straight because there's always like a little bit of extra space between the stitches. But you can see this progress here. If you haven't already seen my previous videos on this project, I am using um, this yarn by Barocco. It's a blend of, I don't think it's super wash, but it's a blend of merino, yak, and alpaca. And the gray color is my hand spun. It's a blend of cashmere and silk and merino. I'm also using a sock yarn, like a superwash merino sock yarn held with silk mohair that was from ocean by the sea i bought that a few years ago at rhinebeck back in 2019 and then this is that silk mohair held with the sock yarn as well and then these three colors here the brown the gray i already utilized in this top first portion as well as this kind of greenish yellow these are both cormo this is undyed natural cormo, and then this is cormo I over dyed with some type of vegetable matter. It might have been, it might have been marigolds, I think, or nettles or something. Anyway, I um, had some hand spun stash that I wanted to use. I pretty much always end up with the fingering weight. Um, my spinning has gotten thinner and thinner and thinner, and I recently spun not recently, but in recent months, I spun about half a bobbin of some Australian merino fiber that was given to me by Ann Weaver. Um, Ann Weaver is the half owner with Carita Collins of Ply, which is a Baltimore-based business, um, Ply Yarn. She and I met up at the neighborhood fiber company shop because I was picking up an order. I was making an exchange and they were like, you want to just come and drop it off that'd be great and I'm like cool and then I met Ann Weaver there who is like I have all this fiber since you're a spinner you can have it and I have this big bag of merino natural color fiber I've been spinning but I spun it too thin and I I don't know what to do with it I'm thinking I might do a chain ply so that I can get a three ply out of it without having to do too much work but then when I made my sample I didn't change the whorl size because I spin my singles on the smallest whorl to go fastest. I think I made the mistake of using too small of a size whorl and I should have gone up to the larger, um, the, each whorl for my wheel, I have two whorls. Each whorl has two sizes to choose from on each so I could potentially use four different speeds. Um, the smaller the faster and I spun my singles on the smallest one because I really wanted to do it quickly But I ended up with a thinner yarn than I really wanted. So I, next time I spin For a new project. I'm gonna use the next size up on the smallest whorl. I think I'm gonna switch to the bigger whorl when I do my chain ply so that I can just do it a little bit slower and I'm not over twisting my plies because that is just too much happening at once and it got so jumbled up I just threw it away but I'm gonna run downstairs and get my bobbin of singles so I can show you exactly what I mean I'm really gonna try not to crinkle this bag but as you can see this is wool <laughs> Um, this is wool from New Zealand. I think I said Australia earlier, but it's from New Zealand and it's from canecarding.co. Let's see if there's any more info here. It says merino right here. So this is a natural color merino fleece that's been machine carded. This is the bobbin of singles that I spun on my Kromsky minstrel spinning wheel. There's a few areas you can maybe see right here. I wonder if I can get the camera to focus on it. Anyway, I can't get it to focus on the tiny little spots where I've overspun a tiny bit. There's just areas where it's kinked up on itself and I've become a little bit of a perfectionist in my spinning. And I just abandoned this project for quite some time. It's been resting on this bobbin for quite a while, 
but when it gets cooler I feel like I want to spin more it's so dark there's like nothing I can do outside. Spinning yarn is something that I haven't done in quite a while. I can't even recall exactly what month it was that I started this project, but I just felt like I needed to minimize the amount of space devoted to wool and fiber in my life. I was going through bins in the basement, making sure everything was together and organized. And I found this bag that I had sitting out because I hadn't stored it away yet. And I thought it would be great if I just spun this up into something like a sweater project and just got it out of the way. And so that was my intention when I started. And then I just dropped the ball and I haven't picked it up, but I do hope maybe sometime soon I will feel inclined to spin again. I might just spin from a new bobbin, even though this one isn't quite full, I would rather just start spinning from a new bobbin so that that yarn can rest and it won't be like half rested, if that makes any sense. This twist has really been set for quite a while, so I would rather start from a new bobbin and then let that bobbin rest for quite some time before I ply these two together. Um, or maybe do even a three ply or potentially do the chain ply like I had intended to. I just don't know that I love my personal execution of chain plying and so I might rather stick to the two ply or three ply approach. Um, so I wonder what your thoughts are. Do you have any tips on chain plying? So today is Saturday. Brian is right now at the farmer's market picking up our weekly dose of kale. We buy our kale from the farmer's market because it's so much more affordable. You get this huge bag for $3, which is what you would buy for like maybe a pound at the grocery store. And each time he goes to the farmer's market for us, I record my podcast. And after I'm done recording, I'm going to go hit the lake and skate. I'm going to edit this podcast while I'm skating. After I do a little bit of movement, for my body. I'm going to hop in the car with Brian. We're going to go to Frederick, Maryland, and we're going to do some holiday shopping. Um, I know some of you live in Maryland and probably closer to Frederick than I do. It's about an hour away from us, maybe 45 minutes. And um, it's probably one of the most beautiful little towns. It is in Western Maryland and um, it's the home of Magpie Market, which you might know through Magpie Fibers. There's a lot of, I say a lot of, but there's like a few knit fluencers who work there. And when I've been in the shop before, I feel so socially awkward because I know who they are, but I'm sure they don't know who I am or have seen my like knitting channel. So I don't say anything about myself. I just like shop and leave and then feel embarrassed because I didn't say anything but I think this time maybe I'll say hello like directly like I enjoy your content but we're gonna go uh shopping I'm looking for a big beautiful candle I really want a big beautiful candle for the home and I feel like that's the kind of thing I want to buy in person because I want to smell it and I'm ready to drop some coin I'm ready to burn my money away and I want to burn it in the form of a candle so that's my goal I don't know if it'll be met I have no clue what I might find but Frederick is the type of downtown where you can hop into these little local shops that have beautiful things that most of the time I would never spend my money on because I'm cheap but um that plus there's the knot house which is my favorite local yarn store i do intend to hop in there maybe i'll get some content for you guys i don't know we'll see i get a little embarrassed to pull out my camera but i'll try to get some footage of that trip to frederick to share in my next vlogmas that is it for this week's episode of the thread to men podcast i want to thank you so much for watching if you want to find me on social media my name is taylor e owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care.